What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Phil Singer Games Character Spotlight with Mike and Brock. I'm Mike. And I am Brock. And we are on episode number 24 of our little show here, Questions and Answers. That is six months worth of our, of our show. It's true. We made the halfway point of a year. Yep, we're there. R- roughly halfway point. Yeah, we've got two more weeks to be officially through the half, half the year, but... We'll get there. Yep. So what's happening with you? Well, uh, a little while ago, Grant sent me uh, his Hollywood wrestling guys. I started playing with them, have had my tournaments. I had uh, the Prince of Queens, Brian Myers, win the title. And the uh, All right. Los Primos Rivera's as my tag champs. And I'm actually enjoying it. So what I did is I looked at the backs and it's where he's got um, the dates on when he released them. Okay. So that's how you're bringing them in. Yeah. I took the first two years. So it gives me like 14 wrestlers. Mm -hmm. So I run it like a a really small indie fed. And I've I've been on small indie feds where you're like, how are we going to get a lot of shows with 14 guys? (laughs) Yeah. and Somebody's going to have to pull double duty. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and I did that on one of my shows. So I'm, I'm, I'm running every show as an independent show. Mm-hmm. Like if a feud happens, it's going to happen on the show. And it, it might carry over for two or three cards. Yeah, yeah. So I had, I had one match. Um, what's his name? Uh, I'm so get familiarizing myself with everybody. I had Eric Watts and Che Cabrera fight. Okay. So what happened is uh, Che Cabrera got disqualified in about 20 seconds into the match. <laughs> and so, you know, he, he lost. So, you know, he's he's freaking out. He wants, a, um, you know, a, a, a rematch. And he wants it later. And I'm like, yeah, I'll give it later on that night. Because I've actually ran a, uh, a book to show like that mm-hmm. where we were short on wrestlers. And so I had the one guy go out and he, you know, he got DQ'd, right? You know, d- just m- mistakenly, he leaned back to punch, hit the ref. Ref disqualifies him like 20 seconds into a match. He's like, no. That so ref is a I, jerk. <laughs> that's, that's when I got the idea. I'm like, hey, I'll do this. And so he challenges him again. So later on, they come out again and, you know, it's another DQ. Oh, no. <laughs> and then the third time they fight. No DQ match? No, it, it's, it's, it, he ends up getting pinned in like 20 seconds. He starts arguing with the ref because the ref is now, you know, keeps disqualifying. So he's arguing with the ref. And he rolls the ref up and one, two, you know, he rolls him up mm-hmm. and the referee counts one, two, three. But we got three matches. With two guys. And, and none of the matches were very long, but the fans were, mm-hmm. you know, building into it they're like and then soon it's a 20 second match and it was a huge pop and people are like oh my god and i'm like <laughs> that's how you can tell a little quick story mm-hmm. so i i tried to recreate it with the the, the watching and it happened <laughs> I, I only did the one dq but the pin happened in like 30 seconds that's awesome i love when <laughs> things work out as planned <laughs> it worked out perfect <laughs> but with this fed what i'm trying and i'm liking it is you know how you get the uh, power jody moves mm-hmm so somebody posted that they start off with a, a seven and they add or subtract the power and agility of the opponent. Okay. So if, if Che does his snap suplex, um, Eric Watts is a minus three power. So Che would have to roll four or under for the move to work. Okay. That's yeah, one little dice roll, but yeah, yeah. it's sort of automatic. Mm-hmm. So I like it, that. It, it very well could happen. I, I heard uh, Chad and I'm talking about that rule on on roll up, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'm going to give it a try, and I'm I'm actually really liking it mm-hmm. because now not automatic, and you can you can can get the odd roll. So you know, yeah, so catch somebody with a surprise or something with a move, or yeah, and the guys who have the uh, reversal on level two, you know, that level two one reversal move that power or, or Jody that always appears on that first roll. Mm-hmm. It's not as devastating to them now because now there's the odd time, you know, the move gets through. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a cool idea. So whoever made that up, good job. I'm liking it. I think I'll move it into my GWF. Ooh. Nice. 
And uh, I know baseball season just started for us. Uh-huh. Yep. So it was funny because uh, I tuned into the Jays home opener. And uh, they're down 7 nothing after three. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sw- I switch to the Cincinnati game. They're down 7 nothing. <laughs> so I, I text uh, Jeff Manning. Whoever that is. I'm like, can you believe this? I said, I, you know, I cheer for two teams, the, the, the Jays and the Reds, uh, mm-hmm. my, my favorite American League and favorite National League. And Jeff's also a Reds fan. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to watch the hockey game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, St. Louis is playing, and I tune into that, and they're down three to one. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, <laughs> down. But then the Blues come back and win it. So there you go. In overtime. And, I, and then Jeff, Jeff's messaging me, and he's like, hey, He's like, the Jays just came back and won 10 8. I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch that. <laughs> but they were happy. Come back. That, that's Canadian. a comeback. Yeah. The Pirates lost 9 uh, 0 in their season opener. <laughs> so, so they're right on track to continue where they left off last year. Only 160. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, yep. That's a whole topic for another time. Yeah. The Pirates. So our, our show today is going to revolve around our Q and A. Yeah, yeah. We uh, asked. Well, it's been like a month ago now. Yeah, I think yeah, about that. Yeah, we asked people to put up questions, and they did. Mm-hmm. So I wrote all the questions down, and then we had to take a few weeks off for for some personal stuff, and I completely forgot what the questions were. <laughs> So we literally just ran them over again today. So you're going to get some fresh answers without us thinking about them, which is probably yep. what we wanted best. Exactly. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the questions in order that we got them in. Okay. And the first question is from Eric Seifert. All right. This question is, have we ever cheated to get Ooh. a result we want or to prolong a match? Hmm. I can honestly say I've never done that. As disappointing as some of the dice rolls have been, I've always played what's what's what the dice have given me. Yeah. Now I have set up a match before where I, I'm about to have a match, but I know I'm gonna do a run in. Mm-hmm. And so I don't care who's winning or losing. But yeah, we're running, and the, there's just no continuation of the match. Okay, so it doesn't matter who wins and loses. So, um, yeah, I've never, I've never went. Ah, I need that guy to win. Yeah, he's gonna win. I, if if that person doesn't win, you know, sol. <laughs> well, one thing that I, I will admit to doing is I will make dumb decisions for a character I'm trying to get to lose. Like going for a death jump when I really don't need to, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, he's got a death jump of A. I already got four tokens on him. Uh, yeah, let's try that death jump. <laughs> and then he rolled the pen option or something like that. I have done that, but still the dice have determined the outcome there. Yeah, th- th- there are times when I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm rolling back and forth. Now, this has happened. Um, so- I can lose track, and I'm like, who did what? And you're trying to replay back in your mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, was this guy down? Was this guy? Or you get called away or something distracts you, and then you come back, you're like, oh. Yeah. Okay, initiative time, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I do for, to prevent that, and I, you watch my stream occasionally, so you yeah. probably see me do this. Whenever I, you know, like if I'm engaging with my chat or something like that, I put the dice on whoever, what level of offense they're on. I do that now. Okay. I can come back to my match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I started doing that when I was streaming just because, you know, you stop and, like, somebody asks a question or something like that. You're like, oh, no, what was I doing? <laughs> yep. Because it's very easy to do when you're playing both cards. It is. But, yeah, I've never, I've never cheated to get, to get my result or to prolong a match. No, I, <laughs> I don't want to. If I could shorten a match sometimes, I would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love those quick 30-second matches every once in a while. They're, they're not bad. Yeah. But yeah so to answer your question, no. No, we've never done that. <laughs> okay, the next one's actually, this question comes from Kevin Butcher. Uh-oh. 
And this one got a lot of traction on the board. <laughs> I saw this. <laughs> and I think he was going with, who was it, Barry Walsh? Yes. Yes. Over. Kevin asks, why do we hate the power creep? Okay. And we both have answers to this one. I'll let you go first because you were all ready to even answer it prior no, to in rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think if it was a two way street where guys would get better and decline, it wouldn't be so bad. But when was the last time we've seen anybody get a downgrade? It just seems like now characters just fade away whenever their storyline has ended instead of them going through like, Oh, now he's, he's weaker. He's going to transition into a manager role or, you know, he's going to fade away and, you know, he's going to push this new, new guy to the front. The new guy to the front just comes in tougher than the, the guy who he's replacing instead of that whole progression of let's bring this guy down to bring this guy up. I think is where, where I get, I don't want to say annoyed, but, it definitely, definitely creates a, a power creep where, and I think Barry brought up how Thantos was supposed to be the top guy who wouldn't even be able to compete against today's cards. Yeah, that's true. Th Thantos would be a mid carder right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, for, for me, the reason I don't like power creeps is because they're really tough to reverse. Right. So once a guy's already there, you know, you can't pull them all back. Exactly. The only, the only way they could start doing it now is to slowly putting, you know, put guys out and slowly just writing them out or, mm -hmm. or to give them decreases. Yeah. Like we had, you know, Thantos. Yeah, he, 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 was, he was the top guy, but he could still lose to people. Yeah. And then... The first, I think, real, like, even with the second set, Magister and Spike, I mean, sorry, Bishop Hell and Spike, you know, they could still get beat. You know, they, they were the tough guys, and Bounty Hunter and Galactic Punisher and Magister, you know, everybody was still in that, you know, mid to upper level guys. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until he got to Chaos. Yeah. He was the game chaos breaker. Was, yeah, he was, he was the game breaker, but he was a generational guy. He was like our Brock Lesnar. Yeah, he, he never got upgraded. No. He had the same card. He got a special edition card, but I believe the stats were identical. It was just new artwork. Yeah, and he did get a downgrade. Mm hmm Like, they took, they took away the stone. Yeah. 106. And he gets a bit of a downgrade. Like, his mm -hmm. power goes to minus four or something like that. Yeah. But you, you, you do see the decline. And I thought, that's perfect. Like... He, 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 I'm in 2105. He's still dominated for me. He's, you know, he's, he's the guy. I don't mind the power creep on him because there's only one of him. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, he made Alpha Force, you know, double plus five finisher, but uh, he never did a whole lot for me. Obviously, me he didn't hit and he got, he got decreased rather quickly. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, they bring somebody up and, you know, he, he goes away. But the power creep didn't stay. Yeah. You know, the gladiators got upgraded, but they weren't undefeatable. Mm -hmm. Like some of these new teams, you see them. And, and if you pulled them, you know, and f from, you know, 2036, 2136, and you drop them now, they're just going to kill everyone and, you know, go on these huge runs. You can't come back from a power creep. Like right now, they're stuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got this guy. Well, if I'm going to introduce somebody, he's got to be better. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, and on it's that just, note, they just keep stacking. And if any game gets a, a, a pass on this, it's, it's this because it is an ongoing progression of things where if you're going to introduce new characters to compete, they need to be tougher than these guys yeah. because we're not getting that, there's those downgrades. So I understand why it has to happen. But, you know, where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah, you do need, if you're going to bring a guy up, you got to bring him down. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're reading about, like, you know, Infinity Plex and Plex. They're 800 years old. Yeah. You know, they can live to 800. They're only 300. They're, the, they're going to be hanging out for a while. Yeah. <laughs> they need an upgrade. <laughs> they but upgrade that... them, they downgrade them. You know, they, they, they can do whatever they want with these guys. But when, mm -hmm. you know, you're introducing guys like 
that. That's yeah. why I kind of like how how tough the Kronos guys are. Yeah. Because if you if you want that just slugfest of you know these behemoths, that's that's a great place for it because it exists outside of time. Yeah. I got. I, I can't remember who I was talking to, and I said, if I actually you know at one point get up to that level, I don't know if I'll use some of these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I'll I'll use monolith or these guys because I've used them in tournaments and I didn't enjoy using them. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is though now like there's so many there's not just a handful of upper tier guys it's about a 50-50 split. Yeah. Of those top tier guys. It's it's like that first Galacticon when I'm playing in uh, Myron X Coleman's tournament and all these guys are you know, double plus five finisher guys and, you know, minus four, minus four, and, you know, put, put you down four times. Whoever and, rolls a six first wins. <laughs> and, and we made a turn, you know, and we saw this and we're like, these are ridiculous. Oh, that's an average wrestler now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. They are trending tougher. But um, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it's justified to an extent. But I wish just as many guys were getting downgrades as people were getting upgrades. Yeah. How they used to do it. Mm hmm Yeah. But I, I don't hate the power creep, I guess, is the question. <laughs> to answer the question, I just wish that there was more balance. Yeah. There's got to be a balance to the force. Mm hmm You know, I don't mind two or three guys in that, you know, maybe four guys in your upper echelon. Mm -hmm. not 20 of them in your upper echelon yeah because, yeah you know even your lower tier guys are you know killing it mm -hmm. and then there's still some really low tier guys in there too yeah. there's a handful of those guys in there too that just you know stay it would be next to impossible for them to score that occasional upset yeah but i hope that answered the question yeah hopefully that hopefully that helps there kevin <laughs> But yeah, okay. that's a good question, though. Thank you, Kevin. Yep. And that's why we do the whole, uh, how would we make this guy bigger? It's a little slight jab at the, at the game. <laughs> okay, Kurt Campbell. He wanted to know the most unique face turn and heel turn outside of GWF Canon that we've had. Okay. I had Omega turn heel in the first year. And form the Legends of Wrestling with Thantos. It's probably my biggest heel turn outside of the game. And outside of game canon. Biggest face turn. I believe I had Matador go on a... He's, he was never really that bad, though. Of a bad guy. He was just kind of tough. But because he was just winning all the time, that I just kind of turned him into a fan favorite. He started fighting the villains because he'd beaten all the heroes. Yeah. For me, it's almost identical to what you just said. Really? <laughs> so I have I have planned, and I've only told this to, to Kevin Butcher, so I'm gonna everybody else will know now know. <laughs> but I I got that uh, Omega card from you know from where he's in uh Cronus. Yeah, yeah. It's a great Cronus. card. And I got uh Chaos Supreme. Another great card. So what I'm actually having is these two wrestlers are just going to start peering at ringside in like masks or hoods. So nobody's going to see their faces, but they're going to be in the fan section. Just show after show, just appearing in random shows. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be standout because they're, you know, huge muscular guys. Yeah. They're not going to say words. They're just going to be hanging out all the time, watching shows, not cheering, not clapping, mm -hmm. just watching. And it's going to be revealed that at one point it's Omega and Chaos, but from an alternate reality. Okay. And so Chaos, so Omega's going to be a heel. Nice. He's going to come in and they're, they're coming in from a different dimension to take over. Nice. And eventually I'm going to bring in two more Kronos guys to have a stable or maybe three. And I'm going to have both the heels and the villains kind of team up. It's going to be like a almost an NGO 
I like angle, it. Like invasion angle. But uh-huh. it's going to be these guys from a separate universe. And Cronus is going to be my separate universe. And so you can have chaos versus chaos. But it's going to be chaos supreme. And how I'm working it is because chaos doesn't have his, his stone. Mm-hmm. The chaos supreme is going to steal his stone and make it his. That's why chaos no longer has a stone. Nice. I like that. So... Like I said, when I think of a storyline, it's a year in advance. That's my year <laughs> building up to this massive storyline. So Omega is going to be also my 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 uh, my, my uh, thing, my biggest face turn, like mm-hmm. guy going face to heel, but reversing. I had Matador turn for a few years, but for me, it, it wasn't that big of a shocker anyway. Yeah, he never um, came across as evil or anything. No. To me. Uh, I think it might be for me. Um, I just had the mercenaries, or I call them body count, mm. but uh, vigilante and and uh, uh, soldier of fortune. So, and how I work that is, they've been healed for so long. Like I can't even remember when they first became. Uh, um, the, the the mercenaries, mm-hmm. but they've been my top heel tag team for years. Yeah, and uh, Soldier of Fortune just got downgraded, and I, and I had them get beaten up severely. And so Vigilante comes down to make make the save. I think he got, and uh, so they didn't make the cut. Like they, they were going to be, they knew they couldn't compete anymore. Uh-huh. Because, of, because of Vigilante's, in, no, because of Soldier of Fortune's injury, because that's when he got downgraded. Yeah. So Soldier, so I had them voluntarily drop down into the middle fed because Vigilante didn't want to see his partner not be able to compete anymore at a, at a high level. That's a cool thing to do. So that made them instant fan favorites. Yeah, that's, that's how I, that, that's how I, I, made them into into fan favorites how can you root against the guy who did that you know yeah i i i, I gave him a, a human side like a you know an, an emotional attachment to, and, it, and it works it gets the fans behind you yeah for sure that's cool i like that so that's how, that's how that, that was my uh my my uh biggest turn where it's from heel to face so hopefully that that answers your question kirk Thank the you next for the one. question. Yeah. Barry Walsh. Greatest overachiever tag team in single star and greatest underachiever in singles. Okay. And My greatest overachiever is Billy Joe Boxer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've talked about that before. Um, he just wouldn't lose. It just lucky dice rolls or whatever it was. He just would not lose for me. Went to the title right away, held it for a while. So he's definitely my biggest overachiever because I don't see anybody else having much success with him. And for a singles guy, underachiever is definitely Alpha Force. Couldn't couldn't get anything going with him whatsoever. Yeah, for, for me, um, for singles, my greatest overachiever, uh, I'd have to say massive. Okay. Like, I know he did well for, you know, for some people, but he literally captured every one of my titles. Mm-hmm. And because I use a point system, so it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm favoring him. He just did well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, greatest overachieving tag team would have to be the what's happening right now in my in my uh my lower tier fed my my cpc and it's the stormtroopers okay hammer and powerhouse they're a they're a two they're a bottom level tag team so they're competing for the milky way tag titles which is my low tier mm-hmm. but they just won the heavyweight tag titles as well nice and and they've been defending both of them simultaneously and they're a heel mm-hmm. tag team so they hold all the gold, and I'm like, these guys shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I love when stuff like that happens, though. I'm it's, trying... it's not like I would say it's not like when I had Tarak and and Pulsar capture my tag titles because they lost every match. These guys are winning every match, mm-hmm. and they could probably get the points to move up, but they're not dumb. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, if they move up. Big fish, small pond situation there. <laughs> yeah, they're they're going to be sent back down the very next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I can't think of any of my tag teams on. I, I I don't have any tag all my tag teams like I never had anybody really dominate. Yeah. It was everyone was just kind of middle of the road, so that, that question's tough for me for tag teams. I see for my underachieving, hands down, Alpha Force. Yeah. <laughs> I think he captured the heavyweight once, held on to it for like a card or two, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, a couple defenses, and he's never done anything. He just so much so much potential. Yeah. He couldn't do anything. And and the the tag team would be the the, the Greek gods. Yeah. I, I never had much success with the Greek gods either. Right off the bat, they captured the tag titles once. And that was it. Mm-hmm. There was nothing. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really compete well against the Gladiators for me as the two tag teams in that first, first set. Yeah, that'd be... I can't think of an overachiever in my tag ranks. Yeah, I can't think of anybody that overachieved, unfortunately. Yeah, like I said, I didn't have one until until recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like yeah, you, you get some teams where you put them together. Like I had, uh, you know, Spike and Massacre. I talked about them. Mm-hmm. One, you know, one rain, 19 defenses. Well, that's not much of an overachiever because those guys are both solid. Right, right. They should do that. And same same as Pulsar Prime and uh, Massive. I had as a tag team. They were like 27 and 2. Yeah. But they're both solid cards. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said for your overachiever, you know, you had Billy Joe. Mm-hmm. You know, I had, you know, I got the Stormtroopers, which is, you know, even Earthquake and Massive couldn't do what, what these guys are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the dice gods are favoring them right now. <laughs> I love when that happens, though, when these guys get on a tear. And you just who's going to beat, you know, whoever? You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> this shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> no, and it's funny. And they'll get their ass kicked, and all of a sudden, Hammer will, you know, will do something, get, get some guy down, and it's five, six, five, six, five, <laughs> six, over. <laughs> yep. So it's just, just kind of good that way. But Hopefully that answers your, your questions, Barry. And mm-hmm. Sorry, I uh, was unable to answer one of those. No. And then uh, we got one from Thomas Keene. All right. Wondering how much weight does mutant gain after eating at an all-you-can-eat buffet? <laughs> hmm. I should weigh myself before and after an all-you-can-eat buffet. Yeah, I've thought of doing that myself. <laughs> it would probably come out slightly low. Okay. What what is his listed height and weight here? I'm gonna try and do some math behind this. I'm taking this seriously. Okay. <laughs> because um, th- this is important to me. Get one of those beautiful mind sequences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right, so mutant here is listed at two hundred and thirty eight pounds. He's six foot tall, so he's not a very tall guy. so he, he doesn't have a big frame to carry a lot of weight. So yeah, but that means you can eat more because you don't have any fatter on the stomach, so the stomach can actually expand more. That's why all those all those hot dog eaters that's are true not big fat guys because they're all thin because. As soon as you start getting that visceral fat inside the body, the stomach can't expand. So he probably has some room to grow. So did he eat already that day? I'd say between five and seven pounds he could probably gain. He's probably a heavy protein guy. Yeah, he's pretty he's pretty jacked, honestly. He's got yeah. three nipples. I, I can't see him going for a lot of breads. No, he's gonna be straight up carnivore on that on that buffet. He's gonna yeah. be eating the meatloaf and the uh, the chicken wings at Ponderosa. Yeah, prime rib. He's going for all that for sure. He's I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, five pounds. Yeah, five to seven pounds is a good good range. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's 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 a safe bet. But it depends on if he ate earlier that day or not. If this is his first meal, like say this is dinner and he missed breakfast and lunch, he'll be on the high end of that. I'll say up to eight up to eight pounds if he skipped breakfast and lunch. Yeah. Maybe he had a big jog or something, did some cardio prior. <laughs> yeah, you gotta carb up after that. Yep. <laughs> Okay, Neil Lau. He asked two questions. Okay. The first one is, what is the future of bootlegs? Uh, as a bootlegger myself, uh, I don't see too much. I see, like, I think the sets are gone. I think bootleg sets are gone. Yeah. I think what we're going to see is more of, like, a card you can drop in in, like, an FTR or something like that, or a Cronus, Cronos, or however you pronounce it, like a single card, like single use card that doesn't really have a lot of storyline to it that you can just easily drop into whatever you're playing. Yeah, I, I see. Like you said, I don't see any big big sets anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you got like Sam Luptek and his you know, <laughs> twenty card set from. Uh, from from uh, like doing a legends thing, mm -hmm. legends bootlegs are popular. Yeah, but as far as Champions of the Galaxy type characters, they don't seem to be as popular anymore. No, I I think if anything, if you get a set, it's gonna be like a a four card set at most. Mm -hmm. Just something something small. Somebody wants to get a few of their ideas out. Like I did a five card set. The last bootleg I released was. I want to say, I, re I released him at the Galacticon when Necro Butcher was there. That was like 2008, 2009-ish? Yeah, long time ago. I can't, I can't mm. honestly remember. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've done a lot of bootlegs since then. Yeah. I have that whole my whole NDW fed, and the idea that I had from that was it started with eight characters, and then every quarter I would introduce four more until I hit twenty, and then I started doing an eight card set every year after that. And then once I hit the fourth set, I'm like, this is way too big, way too big. So I, I went, I dialed back, I started doing updates, started doing like single characters that you can just drop in and use however you want. I do want to go back and do the next couple sets eventually. And there's been a handful of people bugging me, like, when are you going to do the 2137 set? I go, just not feeling it right now. You know, it's just, it's, it's the, the, that whole premise has changed for me. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I think we've seen the last of the, you know, the, the 10 and 12 card sets that people mm -hmm. need to make. Because it's expensive now too, with color. Oh, oh yeah, because oh, well, people want them in color. I I don't mm -hmm. know if I ever do a set in color, but people yeah. want things in color. I don't mind black and white because nine times out of ten, when I'm playing, this is what I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. I don't, I don't see color, so color is not a big deal to me. This mm -hmm. is this is what I play with when I play is all face down. Right. So I don't mind black and white. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think in singles, in, in uh, like GWF type bootlegs, you'll still see, you know, one to four card sets. Yeah. When it comes to legends, but there's so many legends out there now. I don't know why you'd need bootlegs because there's, like, other than, you know, the, the Flair Hogan's, you know, and, and yeah. uh, like the Steiners. The obvious glaring omissions. Yeah. That they'll never be able to get. You know, yeah, Bret Hart and all these guys, like Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. There's, I, I have, I think, five different um, Hogan bootlegs. Yeah, yeah. Good me. Some are good, some are absolutely horrible, but, <laughs> you know, I got them. Right. Believe it or not, I don't have a flare bootleg or, you know, because I, I don't play a lot of Legends now to start off with, so I'm like, I'm not going out of my way to collect. Mm -hmm. I thought Sam did a good job yeah, on his, but, you know, the Legends guys and, and yourself both helped him out with that tremendously. So it, it, it's on par with his stuff. And I think that's why that set caught on quick. 
Mm-hmm. I know he sold out of it. Yeah. Um. But even that set was was. You know the biggest I've ever seen of its kind. Like that was a twenty. Yeah. Set. <laughs> it was more than that, wasn't it? It, I it, have it, it. I have it here, but it's it's out of reach. Yeah, it's I, a pretty I, good size stack. Yeah, and uh, I don't think you'll see the likes of that. You know, I know he's talking about wanting to do it. At, you know, another one like that again, mm-hmm. but that's that's few and far between. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna try and get. A, I do plan on doing the last of the NDW annual sets. And once I finish up that story arc, I'm going to, I'm going back to, oh, here's a, here's a cool character idea I have. I'll make one card of it because I've done everything for that I can with the NDW stuff. It's going to continue. After, there's two more sets that I have already planned. It's just that I need to get artwork and actually make the cards, which is expensive. But uh, after that, I think I'm going to move away from sets and go back to, like you said, or, you know, four max probably, like a tag team and maybe two two feuding guys or something like that. Yeah. Because it's expensive. And I think that's why people have gotten away from it, especially now with the switch to color. Yeah. And then uh, Neil's second question. Will there be more lady wrestlers in the GWF? That's a question for Tom Filsinger. Yeah, Neil, we can't can't really help you out there, buddy, on that. Um, but if you're looking for bootleg women wrestlers that would fit right into the Champions of the Galaxy world, I have a set. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think I think the GWF could use more of a women's roster if they have a women's title. I think they need at least you know ten people competing for that title. Because I think actively on the GWF roster, there's only a handful of women. In the current storyline, yeah, I don't know. I, I I use my own, you know, women's fed, and I just pull them from all over. Yeah, you almost have to because there's yeah. there's not really a lot out there of the official cards. They've been doing a lot of like best of indies women's sets, and those have all been really top notch. Yeah, but uh, I know, again, the... I, know, I know Chris Sinclair and Ty States are both big into the indie women wrestling stuff. Yeah, yeah, they, they both follow into a lot. And, you know, they, they go to shimmer shows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the cards, are they're very well produced, the ones that are out there. But I think he was specifically saying the GWF, though, in this question. Yeah. Is that what he yeah. said? He, yeah, he so. GWF wrestlers. I, I'd say uh, pull the best of the women indie cards and drop them in there. They, they, they would, they'd fit well, I think. Yeah. And if not, I think there's a few in the uh, GWF Z you could pull from. That's yeah, I, there's about yeah. eight to ten in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's those. Their FTR has some. Yeah, um, yeah, but there's not a whole lot in the actual GWF. So I think it would be cool to see some more. I think there's definitely a need for them. Yeah. I think every team should at least have one or two. Yeah, if you're gonna go stables, you might as well. Mm-hmm. And I wish real wrestling would do that too, like WWE, like. A, why isn't Naomi in the bloodline? <laughs> like she, she could win the women's title for him because that was that was the big reveal of well, this is going to date when we recorded this, but that was what Roman Reigns said on Friday. We're going to capture all the titles. You're going to unify the tag titles. He told the U says that. I'm like, you can bring his wife into the team. <laughs> she has half of the tag women's tag titles right now. So I don't know. Just bring in I'm just getting on a soapbox. Nia Jax. <laughs> Nia, bring back Nia Jax. <laughs> the Rock's daughter. She's she's been training for the last four yeah, years. Yeah, she's she's. I think she's still under contract. Yeah. Yeah, because then you could actually capture all the women's titles too. Like they have women's championships. If you want to collect all the belts, you need those ones too. Yep. Sorry, that was a rant that was completely unrelated <laughs> to what we were talking about. <laughs> Then we got some questions from uh, Milton Alexander. Okay. And he asks in his first question, do we think the early classics should get a reimagining format? Do we, do we think so? I would l- honestly like to see the rest of the GWF annual sets get the reimagined set before treatment before we get into those. Yeah. Like, Which is, they did announce the next one is coming. In May, I believe. 
20, 2092. Yeah. Like I use Torn Calum. I'd like to see him get an update because then I could give his actual card an update. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The reimagined sets haven't done too much as far. They've just been modernizing the rules. Yeah. So like everybody has an out of the ring and a death jump and stuff yeah. like that. But other than that, they haven't really done too much to change the characters. Maybe an art upgrade. But yeah, I'd like to see them finish the uh, the Champions of the Galaxy yearly sets, get them all colorized before they get into the, the older stuff. That's true. Because 2092 is where we're at. And then they started in 2125 with color. So they've got... Oh, they're just working their way back? Yeah, they they started with twenty eighty seven. They're to, they're they'll be releasing twenty ninety two in May. So maybe by the time this episode drops, <laughs> I'd like to see them start doing those two a year just to yeah. get caught up because they're about thirty behind. Yeah, it's probably an expense though. Like, and and how many people are rebuying them? And- that's a good. That's a good point. Like, I'm rebuying them, but I buy everything because I'm weird like that. I'm a collector <laughs> at heart and, and just about everything. But um, it is nice for people who got into the game in the color era. Like, yeah. if they buy the color starter set, and then most of that stuff's out of print now, the black and white stuff. So you'd want them to keep progressing through the story. And then you think, are they going to make CPC and Ace colorized? And... I would just stick with the mainline GWF for now. And then if you really are lacking content to produce, but they got so many other thing, other properties going on with the indies and everything else. I don't think they need to go too far into the weeds. No. And then Milton Alexander's other question is, have we ever attended a Galacticon and are we going to go? <laughs> Do you want to answer this one first? Yeah. Um, yeah, Milton, I've, I've been to a few of them. Um, I'd say 30. 30. I have been to 21 in person and two virtually. Yeah, I've been to two virtually because I couldn't get into the country. Yep. And one out in 2020, everyone was virtual. So, yeah. 2021, I just didn't have the uh, funds at the time to make the trip, basically. And it was still COVID time. And with my little ones, we were trying to play it extra safe. Yeah, I wasn't allowed in the, in the U.S. for two years because you guys shut the borders completely from us. Unless we flew, and I wasn't going to get on a plane. <laughs> you think that'd be worse? Yeah. So, but yeah, I plan to attend Chicago this year. Yep, I got my hotel booked already. I'm bringing the whole family, which I might regret later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm flying or driving. Haven't decided on that yet. Yeah. It's an eight-hour drive. That's about what it is for us, too. Uh, it's going to be a lot cheaper for us to drive with four of us. So, Yeah. <laughs> with, with me, there's a small airport outside of about 15 minutes from where I live, and they do Chicago flights. And uh, uh, I just got to see, you know, when and where. So I got to work ooh. around that. We were going to go up Thursday, but we're going up Friday now because Hope has a, she's going to a little camp thing, a dance camp. And the last, the, like the performance day is that Thursday. So we're going to be roughing it and getting it out there Friday for hopefully make it for the wrestling show. We'll see. So Milton, I hope that answers your question as have we ever been to a con? <laughs> yeah. We've been to a few of them combined over 50. So <laughs> yeah. we're, 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 we're Galacticon veterans. Yes. I think uh, Jim Steinoff said that Mike is Galacticon. I believe that was his quote. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been to more Galacticons than Tom Filsinger. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Actually, more than everybody, but. Yeah, but ex- especially Tom Felsinger. Yeah. He's he started, only missed a couple, though, I think. He started skipping them. He's dead. When he, when he up and moved to the other side of the country. <laughs> I think he's only been to one since. He was at one of the Phillies. He was at the Jamestown ones. 
since he's yeah. moved. Um, and one of the Philadelphia ones. Yeah. We're That's the back part of the restaurant. Yeah. That was the one I won. I, I was the 2019 Galacticon champion, and then the world shut down because I'm not supposed to win anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get to gloat with my belt. <laughs> and then I did have an anonymous, or well, a person who asked to remain anonymous. They uh, noticed that sometimes when I talk, my stories don't always add up. So, and, and they, they pointed out some references. And uh, the reasoning behind that is through my wrestling, I've had six concussions. And I had one mini stroke. So not all the time my, my brain no longer functions at 100% capacity. And so sometimes when I talk, uh, I can say something and then I might remember it down the road. And so I just continue and I don't even realize I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh yeah, Spike was, you know, my heavyweight champion 12 times. And then I'm talking about it. I'm like, yeah, Spike was actually my heavyweight champion three times because now it's clicked in. I have it's, sometimes it's a, it's a it's a foggy haze, mm -hmm. so that that is that is why. Uh, and and sometimes when I have that that dramatic pause, because like I said, my <laughs> after after six you know full out concussions, your your brain does take a, a beating. Oh yeah, for sure. That's that's a very real thing. And adding a stroke on top of it, I was able to come back from you know everything, but you know I do have I do have issues now, and it's 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 changed some things, and I got to work around it. So that was the uh, just just a simple answer answer to that question without getting too deep and too personal. Mm -hmm. If I do that, it's just because I'm dumb. <laughs> 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 I have no excuse. <laughs> and but nobody listens to me anyway, so no one would even notice. <laughs> and we do have quite the list of people who are asking now to be on the show. Mm -hmm. So that's good. And you can keep at, you can keep adding. And Todd, we saw you've got a hold of Brock. Yes. Sorry I haven't replied to your email yet because I haven't had a chance to talk to Mike because I've lived at work for the past week and a half. <laughs> yeah. But next week, we'll be starting on to week 25. It's unbelievable to me. Yeah. We haven't missed an upload. We've missed a couple weeks, but we were smart. And we yeah. recorded ahead of time. We, we record ahead. We, we, we now only have a two-week buffer, which is, which is, for me, is good. Yes. Because now when we talk, you know, we're, we're not having, you know, hey, I'm wearing this for the Super Bowl when the <laughs> yeah. Super Bowl's already done and over with. We, we can almost talk about current events, but yeah. I've mentioned WrestleMania, which, you know, is going to be a month behind by the time this episode drops. But yeah, I, I watched uh, day two, I, okay. guess, I guess six out of the eight matches, including outside interferences. Mm -hmm. So The first, uh, first night was far better than the second night, I thought. Yeah, I, I didn't see it, but I really honestly hate and despise Bianca Belair. Really? Oh, I, I, you want to talk about a person you can't get behind? Uh-huh. Her. I. That match was great, though. Did you, it, you need I mean, to go back and watch that match. She just, she just irritates me. I don't know what it is about her. The booking behind that was weird, too. I thought for sure Becky was going to win after what happened on Monday. Bianca cut her hair and all that stuff. Like, she's got to get some kind of measure of revenge. Nope, just gets beat clean. Yeah. So I didn't understand that. Actually, I think what happened there was Becky went to Vince McMahon and said, I want to change my hairstyle. Well, we got to do this. <laughs> Make a storyline out of it. <laughs> just, you, know, you can't cut Bianca's nine-foot haircut. No. Someone's going to eventually. Yeah. Like that's an impressive length. I, I don't know how much of that is weave and yeah, I don't know. Real. But mm -hmm. that's a, that's, a, that's quite the hairdo. You think it'd be dangerous. And and she is a talented wrestler. Don't get me wrong on that. She mm -hmm. she's strong as hell. Yeah. But I just I just don't like watching her wrestle. <laughs> 
She's like she's like the female version of Randy Orton for me. <laughs> so you're like, oh my god, yeah, all the talent, you know, like talented, good, you know, no. <laughs> That's what she is. She's the female version of Randy Orton. I, I could see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that comparison. He retained his title too. Yeah, tag titles with uh, Riddle. Well, I knew that because I I knew that the girl that the women tag title was going to change, and they're not going to let two tag titles change on the same card. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, there, it was, there was no way the Usos were going to lose to the Nakamura and Boogs. No. But, you know, no. Roll-Up did, did an hour and a half of WrestleMania talk on her show. Yeah, and theirs was current, so. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well wrap this one up here. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, then. All right, everybody. Thank you for uh, watching. Uh, if you haven't yet, please click that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you give us, give us a thumbs down if you didn't. See if I care. No. <laughs> No, that's fine. We won't we won't take it personally. But um check out all our friends who are doing Phil Singer Games related content. They're all listed in the description below. There's all kinds of stuff there for you to enjoy. Uh, I won't read them all unless you want me to, Mike. No, you're good. We you can just do a quick, you know, you got the you got the roll up gang, Grant, Lee, Uncharted Territories, mm -hmm. Dave Little. Yeah, I think that's all the ones who do something every week. Yeah. And there's other guys listed down there that aren't as frequent, but uh, have some good stuff out there worth checking out. So uh, show them some love, give them a subscription or follow whatever format they're on. And uh, like we keep saying, like the more people that uh, enjoy these things, share these things, and make these things, the more awareness we get of this game out to the public for something that we all really love and enjoy. So more eyeballs on the game, the better off we all are because of something we all enjoy. I just realized I have a beaver. In Canada, we love our beaver. I live in Beaver County. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I just revealed my location to people. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'll we'll have to edit that out. No, it's okay. I have a very unique name. If people want to find me, I'm not hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And we will see you. We're going to be starting. No, we're already, we already started that in the next set, correct? Yep. Yep. So we'll be continuing on with that. So stay tuned. More to come. Catch you later. Good night or good day. Good afternoon. Depends on when you're listening or watching. This is a video. All right, now we're rambling. Later. <laughs> <laughs>